Welcome back to this, the final segment of today's Price of Business. Glad to be with you. I'm your host, Kevin Price, talking to you about you and your business. I tell you, we've had kind of a nonprofit theme today, which is awesome because I tell you, uh, with all the all the largesse we're, we're getting in a great town like Houston, we should be thinking about making a difference in our larger community. And, and I love uh, to bring uh, to, to the attention of my audience organizations that are doing just that. And uh, this segment, uh, no ex- no exception, Jane Cummings, uh, she's with a great group called the Heart Program. That's heartprogram.org. Uh, introduced to me uh, by a great friend and uh, delighted to be able to spend some time with her today. Jane, welcome to the program. Tell us, let's jump right into it. Tell us what Heart Program is all about. At the Heart Program, and thank you for having me here, Kevin. At the Heart Program, we work with adults who have intellectual and developmental disabilities. So people with Down syndrome, autism, after they've graduated from special education in high school, where do they go? Many of them are not able to get a job right away. And so at heart, we have a job training education program, but most importantly, we have an employment program where we employ these individuals working in vending machines and concession stands throughout the Houston area. Okay, very good. And uh, talk a little bit about the the degree of severity that their handicap might might range. Kind of give us a sense of the range of the people you're working with. Sure. So at the Heart Program, we have a, a very large range of people with disabilities. So everybody in our program has a cognitive impairment, um, and so that affects their IQ. But in addition to that, we have people with hearing impairments. We have people with visual impairments. We have people that are nonverbal. And we also have folks in mobility impairments, so people in wheelchairs, for example. And we're able to work with all of these individuals to try to get them in the workforce because they want to work. And unfortunately, many companies just don't have a place for them or an opportunity for them or a training program that's appropriate for them. That's where a nonprofit organization like the Heart Program can step in and try to meet that need and fill that gap. Yeah. How long have you been been involved with it? And well, I'm old, one of the founders. It? Yeah, great question. So I'm one of the founders. So you could have answered two questions with one answer. That's right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, I love how you asked that. Um, so the organization was formed in 2002. I have a family member with this disability, and that's why I'm so passionate about this That's work. how most, if not all, nonprofits are created. Mm-hmm. That's very true. And so formed in 2002, opened the doors for our first training program in 2006, started our vending and machine, vending machine and concessions program later that year. We just had two vending machines, then we grew to 12. Now we operate 70 vending machines throughout the county. So pretty cool small business. So your your organization has the machines. We do. And uh, and so it becomes a fundraising opportunity for you and then a money-making opportunity for your uh, your clients. Right. Interestingly, we don't actually use that program as a fundraiser. We use it as a job creation program. So the revenues that come from all those vending revenue? machines... Well, they go to replace the products. We've got right, to buy the chips and candies yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Repair the machines, do some maintenance. Um, they allow us to purchase additional machines. Um, and then, of course, we pay all of the, the folks who work in that program, and they all make minimum wage or higher. Really? Pretty cool for people with special needs really? to have That's that opportunity. Really? Uh, That's yeah. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, and I'm not at all critical. To me, self-esteem is done by doing. You yes. know, we can talk about human, de- human beings and human doers all you want, but we get a lot of self-esteem by our activity. You know, and so I don't. I'm not critical of Goodwill or any of the other organizations that incredibly sub minimum wage. You know, it's beyond belief what they're being paid because they're also being paid self esteem. They're right. building self esteem in the process. I think it's amazing that you're doing what you're doing, Deb, so, with, with an actual minimum wage is unheard of. Goodwill, those are fabulous organizations sure. with great programs. And the real difference between an organization like Goodwill and one like Heart is that Heart is trying to find those industries and businesses and job opportunities that can support paying a minimum wage job as opposed to getting a contract or some type of work for these individuals that will never support that, where they have to pay that piece rate. So by creating a vending machine program as part of a nonprofit, we don't have anyone in our organization that's trying to make money off of these vending machines. We're not using them as a fundraiser. So we're using them as a job creation program, and it's creating jobs for these individuals. Yeah. And by getting them into that real-world environment where they get that real paycheck, they're starting to integrate more. And the concessions business sort of grew out of the of the vending business. Now our clients are working at concession stands at huge venues here in Houston. So all the Rockets games at the Toyota Center, all the Texans games at NRG Stadium. We work at every single event that's ever taken place in the new BBVA Stadium downtown, which is where the Dynamo play, the Dash, 
TSU and other sports teams are playing there as well as concerts. So they're working at over 150 events a year and, again, making minimum wage at all of those activities, which is leading them to be able to transition into the workforce. We had a young woman named Maria who was in our program for three years. She got hired by Norris Conference Center this year. They're paying her $10 an hour. Wow. Okay? And after one month, they gave her full benefits. Wow. As they would any other employee. So they're it getting her, a real chance to vet themselves, prove themselves exactly. in these, these environments. And look, it took her three years in the heart program. She didn't learn it in 12 weeks. You know, sure. but over three years of that repetition and that coaching and that training and that hands on experience, she was ready. And that's what we're finding with many of these individuals. They have so much more potential than a lot of people realize. Yeah. Having someone in my family, I know my family member can do more than probably you would think he could do if you just met him. You know, but it's how do we unlock that potential? How do we give them the tools that they need to be successful? Yeah. So uh, are you trying to get them in full-time positions? Are they part-time positions? Does it, you know, uh, does it vary? How does that work? Well, that depends on the individual and what their desires are for work and what any restrictions they may have and also what companies will hire them to do. Sometimes there's only a part-time position available. Other times there is a full-time. So Maria is working full-time. When they're working in the HARD program, we sort of ease them into it because usually they've never had a job. So it's not like me. You know, I had my first job. I was a kid. You know, had several jobs before I got in college, then got my full-time job. You know, these folks are getting out of high school. They're in their 20s and never had a job, never had a summer job, never had an after-school job. So we sort of ease them into that workplace environment. So when they first come to heart, they might go out on a vending machine run, you know, an hour, two hours a day. The rest of the time, they're in the free training program that we offer. And then over time, we'll start adding a concession event here, another vending run, you know, maybe they'll go on Sunday and work a Texans game. And so as they're in the program over a longer period of time, they can pick up more and more hours of work. And that helps them then if they want to transition into full-time or part-time employment outside of Hart, where they've gotten used to working that schedule, getting up and putting on a uniform, you know, getting their lunch ready if they need to take a lunch for that day. So all those kind of skills that you just need to know in your first job. How many, um, how many do you currently have working? So right now in our program, we have room for somewhere between 40 and 50 people who come every day. You know, there's always somebody out sick or um, with a doctor's appointment. We have over 5,000 people just in Houston on our waiting list. Wow. So one of the things I'm working on right now. You need a bunch of vending machines out there. We do. And we're trying to get the word out about our program since we've been here eight years now. Been very successful to try to encourage folks uh, if they want to support a program like this. Definitely, we need volunteers. We need monetary donations. We need donations of equipment. If people have vending machines, they want to donate. We also need supplies and things for the classroom. So there's so many ways to help. If you go to our website, which is you know www.heartprogram.org, which you mentioned earlier, um, there's lots of ways you can sign up to connect with me, connect with the program, and just help us out. So, um, what's the size variance of the vending machines? Oh. That was a strange question because someone may be willing to donate a small vending machine and. Not a big vending machine. How big of a venue does it, or our business does it have to be to support a vending machine? What are are, are those things you just kind of have a, a conversation with these people to to uh, determine? Yeah, great question. So, in terms of donating a machine itself, the equipment, any size matters because if we have a site where we can place that machine, you know, different companies, as you indicated, will want a different size machine depending on what space they have and what their needs are. If we don't have a site where we can place it, we can use it for training in our warehouse, in our facility to train folks before they ever go out on a job site so that they're learning those skills and they're learning all kinds of different machines because that's what they're going to see in the real world. In terms of a company that might want to host one of our vending machines, um, that's we customize everything. Again, we're a nonprofit organization. We're not trying to make the most on the bag of chips or the the, bottle of water. What we're trying to do is create job opportunities. So, for example, we've got a site. Everything in their machine, they wanted it to be healthy. They wanted it to be, you know, caffeine free and and diet and everything. You know, most companies wouldn't do that because they're going to know they're not going to make as much revenue because most people, I will tell you, are number one selling item Snickers, number two. Absolutely. Peanut M&M's. And I'm, I'm pretty much kind of a health nut. And I'll still eat a Snickers if it's available. Yeah, because by the time <laughs> by the time you're buying something out of a vending machine, you know, you're not really thinking healthy at that moment, no, right? No, I, I've, so, I've, I failed to eat somewhere before I encountered that machine. Right. <laughs> I just and that's need something we now. Yeah. But we can do that. So we can customize that. Um, we've got other sites, you know, where, for example, we do all of the vending for AMA, which is a school for primarily Hispanic folks. They have a, a charter school there, great school, really doing a lot for those kids. 
Um, and that they want, you know, the spicy foods. That's what they really love. And that's what they'll spend their, you know, 75 cents on right. at a break. So that machine is customized with the foods that they want. So it really depends on what folks want. We've done ice cream vending. We can do fresh food vending, you know, sandwiches and things you might microwave. We can do your typical, you know, soda machine, snack machine. So really anything. So if someone has a vending machine that's not in great shape, can they donate that as well? And do you have people that are willing to help repair it at a lower cost or... So we do accept donations of vending machines, even if they're not in great shape. We don't have folks right now that will help us repair them at a lower cost. We have people that will charge us to repair them. Um, that's, well, that's something still that we're looking than for. That's a new machine, right? Or, it can be. Yeah. It can be, uh, depending on what's wrong with it. If it's, you know, if it's the motherboard, if it's the validator, um, that's where you know you put your dollar bills in. Those are more expensive. If it's a motor here and there or something, we can tweak. Or a piece of glass. Just or needs a paint yeah. job. Yeah, things like that. So until we really get it and look into it, um, you know, we don't really know how expensive it will be to fix it. But like I said, if we can't place it on a site. We can always use it for training in our facility, and we can always use that to teach our folks how to paint them, how to fix them up, and that kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah, no, definitely looking for those donations as well. Jane Cummins, she's with an organization called the Heart Program. That's heartprogram.org. What kind of things are you doing to let people in the Houston area know about you? Well, we are open and a free program for people with intellectual disabilities. So if you know anyone who's an adult over 18 that could use this program, definitely refer them to us. Also, we're having a big fundraiser coming up September the 2nd over at Cafe Adobe, and it's a happy hour for Heart, and we'd love everyone to come out. It's 5.30 to 8 o'clock on uh, that Tuesday night. So even if you're out of town for Labor Day weekend, if you're back on Tuesday at work, who has plans Tuesday night? Now you do. Come help there us out. There you go. Cafe Adobe is uh, a Westheimer. West this is the location at I-10 in Silver, which is next to the IMAX movie theater. Yep. There's lots of free parking in front, as well as there's a free parking garage out back, too. Got it. All right. Thanks so much, Jane Cummins. And, uh, again, check out heartprogram.org, heartprogram.org. I'm Kevin Price. When we come back, much more for you on tomorrow's program. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I hope you spend it right here. 